wanted to give you a quick primer on coordinate descent because it's used so often in machine learning. So in coordinate descent, we're trying to minimize some function by moving along one coordinate at a time. So here we have our multivariate function and we're gonna to try to minimize it with respect to all of these different, you know, B1, B2, B3, B4, all the way up to BP. And we're gonna minimize it just by changing one coordinate at a time, okay? So in other words, let's say you pick B2. Then you change B2 to minimize R, given that everything else is fixed. Fine, then you update BJ, okay? So how did I know B2, BJ? Ah, I just did it somehow. Okay, so I pick BJ. I minimize R with respect to BJ, leaving everything else fixed. And then I continue doing that over and over again. I keep adjusting them. I might even adjust the same one that I've adjusted before. Um, and I just keep adjusting them until no more adjustments are possible. And then, uh, then um, that at least gives me a, a local minimum of my function. If the function's convex, any local minimum is a global minimum, so that in that case you're in good shape. All right, so yes, we repeat it until no more adjustments are possible. So um, let me show you again how that works kind of uh, with the more graphical perspective. So uh, until you're converged, you choose a direction to move in, which happens to be this direction, I just horizontal to the left, and um, I'm going to move in that direction. I'm going to update my value of b by moving in that direction until I hit the minimum of the function in that direction. And that value is called alpha. Okay, so that's my step size. That's the step I move. It's alpha. Okay, so I move alpha in the jth direction. And then I do it again. I pick a different direction, which happens to be up. And then I move up until I minimize my function in that direction. Cool. And then uh, I move again. This time I happen to move back the other way I came. Move up, move back, okay. So, and then until there's nowhere to move, like at, at this particular spot, there's no direction I can move in that will um, give me a better objective because I have actually minimized the objective and that makes me happy. All right, cool. Great, so why would I be talking about this topic? Because if I knew the gradient, I could just walk along the gradient, right? Why, why do I have to move one coordinate at a time? And I could just go diagonal because I know <laughs> which direction is the steepest. Well, there's a bunch of good reasons why you'd want to use coordinate descent as opposed to gradient descent for, for machine learning. So let me tell you what some of those reasons are. The first reason is if the gradient is impossible to calculate. And I've given you an example which is boosted decision trees. And as I'll, as I'll discuss, um, so boosted decision trees optimizes over the entire space of all possible decision trees. Now that space is enormous. And so uh, you, since you cannot possibly enumerate all of the whole space, then you cannot do gradient descent because you can't calculate the gradient. Okay, so every possible tree is a coordinate. So what Adaboost does, or uh, when it's operating on decision trees, it uses a weak learning algorithm to search that space and find a decision tree, which is the same thing as a coordinate in the space. Okay, so that's one example why you would want coordinate descent over gradient descent. And another example is that the feasible region is constrained. So I've given uh, an example here, uh, which is support vector machines. And with support vector machines, if you try to move along the gradient, you'll end up uh, trying to move in a direction that is not feasible uh, with respect to the constraints of support vector machines. So you have to only move, um, you know, you'd move, you'd move, uh, in fact, if you're doing sequential minimal optimization, you move two coordinates at a time, so you can make sure that as you move one coordinate, the other coordinate allows you to stay within the feasible region. Okay, and then the third reason why you'd want to do coordinate descent as opposed to gradient descent is because you might want to control how the optimization works. And it's easier to control as if you just move one direction at a time as opposed to moving along the whole gradient. And so there are various algorithms that try to change things like the convergence rate by adjusting how far in each direction they move. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some idea why we care about coordinate descent. Thank you.